Welcome back to another episode of the Miskatonic AV Club, a Mythos Busters production. Today, looking at the player cards of Boundary Beyond. Joining me again, Casey. Hi, everyone. How have you been doing uh, over the last six minutes? This is only the player cards, so you won't have to hear my thoughts on the <laughs> I've slowly warmed to the scenario. <laughs> Emphasis on slowly. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's gotten a second wind. Yeah, you you had a chance to catch your breath. All right, you can get to it. Yeah, okay. Uh, is that the handoff? Second wind. Uh, level zero guardian event. One cost. Spirit bold traded. Single willpower icon. Play only as your first action. Heal one damage. Uh, two damage instead if you drew a treachery this round. Then draw one card. Uh, I hate this card. Uh, I think it's horrible. <laughs> I think, uh, I think if you're taking this over emergency aid, uh, if you have the opportunity to take emergency aid, uh, given that, you know, maybe this has a place in Calvin, uh, but emergency aid works on everyone. It does not have to be your first action. It works on uh, allies at your location as well. Uh, it does cost one more, but it's two uh, damage healing is not conditional on drawing a uh, treachery. Uh, and it probably has a better icon too because it's just better than this card in all capacities. I don't know. Uh, tell, I, tell me how I you really this, feel. This doesn't even have the the bold. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't even have the bold thing where you're protected from attacks of opportunity by doing this first. So I mean, <laughs> like, what are you glad to draw this card and play it, other than almost being dead? In which case, just resign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In typical Guardian fashion, you came out both barrels just blasting. Wow. Um, though I don't disagree. I think this card is super meh. Like, it is... <laughs> I I don't like this card at all. I mean, it is sitting in one of my card boxes there. Mm-hmm. I don't see... Unless there is some ridiculous... Uh, Unless there's some ridiculous guardian combo deck that needs to just draw cards like crazy, and literally you're just playing it as a one cost event to tr- just cycle, I think this is a bad card. Yeah. Okay. So if you drew an enemy, this you, you yeah. can't even play this. <laughs> so like, yeah. Yeah. You you want to have drawn the treachery, which if you're guardian, you've got three to four willpower and I, I I don't know. If you're Mark, you've got the card draw taken care of. Mm-hmm. And well, Roland has you probably access. have some other he- you probably have emerged better. So yeah, I, I don't get this card. Calvin could do painkillers instead and put the horror on uh Pete Silvestri, or he could use leather coats to soak. I, I, I don't like this card and I, I struggle to think of a use for it. Unless um, you know, down the road we get uh Vincent Lee, I believe is the um the doctor uh, character. So if he is, you know, the Carolyn, except with damage, I imagine this would be in his deck. Gotcha. Uh, whatever. Like, <laughs> he you know, if, if some imaginary character does something similar to someone else that can already use this card and won't, uh, then I don't think there's much to say. I, I don't have really anything positive to say about this card. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's fair. I'm going to take the initiative okay. and go on to our next card, which is a yeah. guardian skill. Take the initiative. It's got three wild icons. It's practice and bold. Kit only to a skill you, a skill test you are performing. Take the uh-huh. initiative loses a wild icon for each action that's been completed by an investigator this phase. So you ideally want to use this one in the mythos phase uh, or mm-hmm. as your first action, probably an attack. Yeah, first to second action uh, is at that point it's just an unexpected courage, which yep. totally fine, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's good uh, mythos protection since uh, people probably have not taken actions outside of uh, quick thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're quick thinking a mythos test, uh, I, I don't know what to say for you. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you're making take the initiative worse, I guess, if you're doing quick thinking during the mythos phase. Uh, Thanks, rogues. God. Yeah, um, I don't know, it's great. Uh, you know, usually Guardians, if they're trying to clear the board for, of enemies, uh, they would like to go early on in the uh, turn order. So mm-hmm. uh, this likely has two to three icons when you're using it. Uh, and if you're using it after that, uh, don't. 
I guess. Do something <laughs> else. <laughs> I like this in solo because mm -hmm. you're pretty much guaranteed to always get good value out of it, whether you're you're yep. investigating first or you're you're fighting first. Mm -hmm. uh, just a decent all around skill. Uh, I quite like it in uh, Joe Diamond since he has the bad defensive skills, low low willpower and low mm. agility. Um, if he's got to deal with a treachery, uh, he's you know, and he doesn't have an opportunity to cancel it or whatever. Uh, being able to use this puts him at five plus a boost from something else. Maybe it's all right. Uh, yeah, I like it. Um, it's it's good defensively and offensively. I think. Yeah. Uh, at yeah. Least... Uh, it leaves you pretty well prepared. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, well prepared. A level two guardian asset, talent traded, uh, two cost, uh, free action, exhaust well prepared. Choose an asset you control. You have plus X to uh, skill value for this skill test, where X is the number of matching skill icons on the chosen asset. Uh, this gets great. Uh, the, I don't know. It, it, this has lots of cool uses, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. One that people really like it for is uh, Zoe and her cross, which I believe has either two wilds or a wild in a combat or something. I don't know. It gives you a whole wild. bunch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it's at least the wild, one wild. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, if you've got a shotgun out, that's a couple extra combat icons. Um, even if you have, uh, I don't know, like a... Police badge, some more willpower. Mm -hmm. uh, Rolling yeah, lots eight. of cool ways to pick up uh, extra skill pips here and there. Uh, you know, if you get caught off guard and have to react to treachery or you know some other uh, test that you might not be uh, well prepared for, uh, if you've got this card that you actually are. So yeah, I think it's a it's a mid to late campaign buy. Like I don't think you buy this right off the hop. Because uh, mm -hmm. I think your your targets for it get better as you upgrade more of your items and such. Uh, Definitely. But yeah, this is this is a really strong card because there's a lot of assets that will essentially give you mm -hmm. the equivalent of one of the neutral skills or an unexpected courage towards pretty much any skill. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I know Nick has ranted and raved about this and shotgun. Um, yeah, it's a pretty decent card uh, as long as you have the slots for it. I think sometimes I feel like I don't know if I want to fit two in because it it doesn't do anything on its own and it doesn't you, have. You pips. do want to see it early because it doesn't have. Mm -hmm. is the thing. So uh, I think once you have worked your way up to a a consistent deck on its own, getting this will uh, give you a little bit of protection for stuff you might not be prepared for from the extra wild icons lying around, and it will also make the stuff that you're good at even better. So I, I think it's great. And like you said, it's not a priority, uh, but I don't think it's uh, bad. Uh, I think it's good. <laughs> you said extremely articulately. Uh, it's, it's better than bad. It's good. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, you definitely separate. That, ain't that the truth from, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess this, I, I, I think this is my handoff. Uh, so ain't that the truth from fiction? <laughs> truth from fiction is a seeker event. Level zero, two cost, uh, two intellect icons, insight traded as they all are pretty much. Uh, play only if there is a clue on your location. Place two secrets on an asset you control. Uh, I think if you're really dependent on an asset that has secrets, mm -hmm. this is pretty decent because there's not really a way to reload them besides this. Uh, uh, there oh, is Mercy Cash. one other card, uh, and not and, and oh. raptured. Is a mystic oh, right. it, yes. you a secret, but I believe that's it. Yeah, because cash does supplies or ammo. Yes, yeah, supplies and ammo. Right. Uh, Venturer is supplies and ammo. Uh, contraband is uh, supplies or ammo. Yeah. So if you I got believe secrets... this and Rapture are the only references to secrets, or the only ways to add additional. Mm -hmm. um, it's got really good icons. I mean, mm -hmm. as a seeker, you're probably going to want to use your intellect at some point, I would think. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you've got, if you're trying to upgrade the glyphs, uh, you know, it, you can just chuck one of these and, you know, save yourself the extra action and card, and then you just need one to get uh, the translated glyphs, uh, one extra uh, I, an intellect icon, which you probably got somewhere in your deck because you're a seeker. Yeah. Um, and then you have a way to reload them once you upgrade them. 
Yep. So uh, I think it's great. Uh, most likely, there's a clue somewhere on the board. <laughs> so uh, even if you've got to drop one for like a forewarned or something. Um, but then yeah. you have to play forewarned, which eh, it's all right. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, you're not playing forewarned so that you can turn on your truth from fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah, just making sure uh, yeah. people understood. Uh, all right, yeah, uh, I think it's great. And as of right now, I don't think there is other secret syner- you know, secret uh, use uh, synergy or whatever. So, mm-hmm. uh, hey, man, you can even give uh, Mr. some extra uses. Mr. Who, sorry? You cut out. Uh, Mr. Rook. Uh, oh, yeah. From uh, upcoming cycle. Uh, Give yourself some more uh, tutored uh, draw or filtered draw. Rather. Yeah. Um, it yeah. seems like you have quite the true understanding of this card uh, so far. I think you exaggerate. Um, uh, true understanding, level zero, seeker skill, uh, se- uh, innate traded, a uh, single wild icon, commit only to a skill test from an ability printed on a scenario card. If this skill test is successful, discover one clue at your location. Uh, I love this because Seekers just don't have ways to discover clues. Um, so this is really great that that brings some much needed, uh, you know, skill, invest, you know, discovery to the class. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my actual uh, feeling is like I just said. Um, I, I don't know. I think this is such a weird condition to be re- uh, dependent on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're using it for what you're already good at, uh, stuff like investigating or high intellect tests, uh, you're already good at that. Yeah. So you can already discover that. I, I mean, if you if you would you rather have this or a uh, a working a hunch? I guess. Uh, I think I'd rather have working a hunch. I think this is yeah. interesting if you have something like frozen in fear and you can kind of line it up. Uh, <laughs> That's Something. the thing is that, like, how many times are you starting a test on a uh, uh, a scenario card, uh, expecting to pass, or counting on the rest of your turn? Yeah, you know, from passing or something. And also, you want to be at a location with a clue. I think this asks a bit too much. I understand the people yeah. who are like, this is kind of compression, because um, mm-hmm. you can use basically the mythos phase to discover a clue. Yeah, I, I mean, but then it would just be a deduction if it didn't have the scenario card. It would just be a better, a strict upgrade to deduction, which mm-hmm. is only an intellect has to be, and only gain the clue during an investigation. Yeah, this would be anything and just a clue. Uh, I, I <laughs> unless you're, I, I, unless you're doing a scenario that has a lot of tests on locations, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to think of a location like or a scenario like that, I'm coming up short. Um, uh, Knights Usurper, uh, but we won't say much about that. Oh, yeah, so sure. Most people probably haven't played, or, you know. Yeah. It's still, still, I think, in the spoiler uh, territory. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it light, because, yeah. Yeah, uh, that has a lot of location tests. Um, but even just something like, uh, uh, what is it? The the one that adds Doom to your location from Carcosa uh, and turns oh. it into an investigate to remove the Doom. Black Stars, ro- no. Yes, Black- Spires. Spires. Black, yes. Uh, Dark Spires. I think Black Spires. Dark Spires? Something like that. It's Spires. Some combination of Spires and Dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, that can kind of save you a little bit of time wasted getting rid of the Doom on the location. Uh, this is innate, so uh, Silas can take it, although with his uh, low willpower, uh, yeah. he's probably not reliably uh, accomplishing um, uh, treachery tests. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I uh I don't really think there's a good handover to this next one. Except for staring at that hand with the crooked finger. The twelve year old boy sitting at a desk in a tux or a suit. Dukey Hauser, Esquire. Uh <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I think this is yours. Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Uh <laughs> quick study. It is a two-cost Seeker asset, level two. It has a willpower and a agility icon, uh, an agility icon. It's talent-traded, and it has a fast action, 
place one of your clues on your location and exhaust quick study, you get plus three skill value for the skill test. So, I mean, super um, combo with true understanding, right? I mean, you drop oh, a clue, yeah, you get plus three, plus four from understanding. And Unfortunately, it's an investigation test, so you pick up the clue, and then you can't play, you know, uh, oh, truth from fiction, rather. I don't know, yeah. too much truth in this pack. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is certainly the right class to have this sort of effect. Yeah. <laughs> I think, okay, so uh -huh. I, I don't think this is a good card. I don't uh, think so either. I think Rex could use it. <laughs> what, I, like, whatever, man. But, I mean, because, like, he... Yeah. He has his ability to, like, recoup those clues. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure he you would You could also use spend it. a resource on higher education. Yeah. Just get plus two. Yeah, sure uh, could. Over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... This... Yeah, I mean, like, I, I was going to say, like, maybe if it didn't exhaust, but putting two of your clues to get plus six to a test sounds even worse. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I mean, maybe, like, if you've got glyphs and you're on easier standard or something and you're just reliably blowing out tests by, like, four or five. Because mm -hmm. plus three is a sizable bonus. It is. But is it worth a clue? Probably not. It. I mean, it depends on how hard your investigation is. To, you know, how hard is it to recover the clue yeah. in the first place? What do you think of this in either Joe Diamond or Roland? And the reason I say Joe uh, Diamond is because he has a lot of um, testless clue yeah. acquisition from his hunch deck, and Roland yeah, gets the bonus. And, or, and he could do evidence, or yeah. whatever. Um, and Roland has his own synergy. Uh, because you could drop a clue during a fight yeah. test, you know, and get that. And then if back. you draw your elder sign, that's like another plus one on it. So <laughs> for Roland, so it's really amazing when you think about it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like if there's no clues there and you're trying to defeat an enemy, I don't know. I mean, like why? You... Yeah, I don't know. It depends on how easily you can. So if Joe has working a hunch on his hunch deck or an evidence in hand for whatever damn reason have <laughs> it. Like, yeah. I guess it's all right. Um, I, could, I could honestly see putting mm -hmm. one of this in yeah. Rex or Roland. And Roland, it's for fight tests, right? You come across an enemy, you just want to kill it in one big hit, and there yeah. isn't a clue there already. Mm -hmm. You drop a clue, get plus three, pick it up. It's yeah, like, I think that's the best use I can think of for it since Roland is, you know, limited his his reaction is limited. So you know, this would be reliably getting it. Uh and also if you've got a deal with this is like some nice little cover up insurance kind of. Yeah. But I mean I wouldn't take this over uh well prepared, which both Joe and uh Roland could take. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah. Mm. Oh well. Yeah. Put it on the hatchet block, chopping block, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, hatchet man, uh, level zero rogue skill, practice trait, single agility icon. If the skill test is successful during an evasion attack, the next time the evaded enemy takes damage this turn, deal it one additional damage. Um. Well, you're rogue. You can reliably evade stuff. Uh. As Ian points out, whenever people mention this card, uh, you can then sneak attack, uh, right? That's the one? Yep. Yeah, I... uh, for three damage uh, instead of two, um, which can kill lots of stuff, but that's two actions. Uh, I don't know. I think it's... Because we're seeing so many more three mm -hmm. health enemies, I don't yeah. mind this. Because uh, it mm -hmm. allows the seeker to take the worst skill in the game, which is uh, agility, and yeah. uh, turn it into something helpful. So, uh, well, how? I mean, are you counting on? Okay, well, one thing to remember this card, which I think we kind of just glossed over, is it's this turn. It's not this phase. So the right. person that's evading it has to be the person that's doing the damage. 
Uh, and uh, if you're like, Ooh. oh man, I'm stuck with this enemy. It's my last action. You know, give me your hatchet, man. You're not going to get any benefit from it. So, I mean, other than the agility pit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think the turn restriction is a little overly restrictive. Mm-hmm. If it was phase, I would. I think I would be all over it. Because um, then you could... It would be a lot more flexible uh, and less turn dependent. But the way it is now, you're, you know, it's giving you a way to, you know, it, it's compounding success or like keeping the chain going of I, I successfully evaded, now I get to do my attack and then, or whatever, or yeah. I'm attacking it and doing it, you know, getting extra damage in there. But the way it is now, it's like half of a, a manual dexterity. Uh, and then maybe a vicious blow. <laughs> yeah, i I don't think it's I don't think it's terrible. Um, I think it combos well with a few rogue cards as far as the sneak attack. Um, mm-hmm. Or is it? Bad it doesn't actually have to take an action um, since it's any damage. It could be a beat cop or a uh, yeah. our dog triggering an attack of opportunity or something. Which I guess are both skids type uh, yeah. things. Uh, yeah, the fact that it doesn't have to be from an attack makes it very yeah. It makes a big difference. Yeah, that that's a little bit flexible, and I'm just maybe giving it credit for being um, like if you're a partner mm-hmm. with Agnes, let's say, and she has yep. like forbidden knowledge. Yeah, yeah, she could exhaust for doing. She could yeah take that ping and basically do two to the one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a bit restrictive, uh, but mm-hmm. depending on the team makeup and how you're uh running your deck decent mm-hmm. uh mortendahl actually in the chat finn because he mm-hmm. gets a free evade uh yes then this you... becomes essentially a vicious blow on the attack if he doesn't have a, a weapon or something you can take off a, a two health enemy in essentially yeah. one action because you get that free evade yeah uh it's a shame it's not a trick uh because uh oh yeah would love it. yeah but i mean if she's in the party um, you, this might see a little more use. Well, no, I, I don't know. Then are you giving her the icon for her already five agility? Eh, I don't know. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's guaranteed. not terrible. Yeah. 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 It's, I, I, it's not terrible. Is the, not the best thing I can say about it. Uh, the it thing about Rita, has its place. Yeah. The thing about Rita too, is it combos off her ability where if mm-hmm. she successfully evades and this is in there, it says, okay, next damage is plus one. And then mm-hmm. after she evades, it, it would essentially do two damage. Yeah, which is yeah, and so you are yeah chucking this agility icon to a test that's already super powered. Um, uh, yeah, but it's doing two damage on a one test, and mm-hmm. yeah, you're testing at six or seven. So I think yeah, I think yeah. it has. It's very specific investigators, and it's very specific team makeups. Yeah, having the out of turn damage available is uh, makes it a lot better. I think yeah, um, but I mean. If you did, you do this one or did I do this one? I don't I know, but I have one. nothing, so you you make a good oh, one. Oh, uh, so high roller. Um, yeah, so you're rolling high if, if you have that team composition. Um, high roller, level two rogue asset, uh, two cost, uh, talent traded uh, with a single intellect and single combat uh, icon. Uh, free or fast action rather. Spend three res- resource. Uh, spend three resources and exhaust high roller. You get plus two skill value for this skill test. If you succeed, gain three resources. The higher oh. the stakes, the better his luck. Um, Hi, Preston. Yeah, uh, it's a combo ass rogue card. So, I mean, like, welcome to the class, I guess. I, <laughs> uh, I think people have like their scenario where you have double or nothing and quick thinking and high rollering and. Uh, you know, like where you you have your I am become God, uh, death destroyer of worlds moment, mm-hmm. where you basically get like an entire or something. You have your vicious blows, and your whatever. Uh, but when you get plus two, like you're using this, I think for something that you're you already have a solid chance at, which is kind of different from the more reactive uh, nature of like well prepared or the flexibility of. Uh, quick study Mm -hmm. you know so like using this for like an agility test that finn is probably already going to pass uh i don't know i mean like 
It's all right. I think uh, when it when it goes when it yeah when you pass the test you feel great, but mm -hmm. when you spend three resources to get plus two and you beef it anyways, then uh, you feel like shit. <laughs> well, I think this like I mean if you look at uh, Streetwise, mm -hmm. right? Like you spend re three resources for plus two, but you are not yes. getting that back. Whereas High Correct. Roller offers you the option of any test value. For three yeah, users. it's like yeah, spend three to get an unexpected. Yeah, with the possibility. Yeah, with the possibility um, of if this test is successful by two, return this thing to your hand, kind of thing. Um, I think mm -hmm. if you're building that succeed by two, you yeah. you basically do this every test you can. Mm -hmm. I realize it exhausts, but you play two of them, and if yeah. you're doing the succeed by two, if you're always constantly succeeding by so yeah. much, like you you keep that momentum going. And basically, you're just waiting for... But how for... much is it costing you to succeed every time? Because if this is three on its own, yeah. then, you know, you sink two in a streetwise. Maybe you've got... So you're pulling in two resources around. Um, but if you have, like, both your res um, resourcefuls... Like, if you have two resourcefuls and a high roller, you're plus four mm -hmm. to, like, almost any test. And then let's yeah. say you have a cigarette case out. You now you're drawing cards. Like those opportunities come back to hand. You get the three resources back from high roller. I think like mm -hmm. once you get to quote unquote cruising altitude of the plus <laughs> two deck, like yeah. it's really hard to come down. And mm -hmm. basically, it's only the tentacle that's gonna kind of yeah. snap you back. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. I mean, like that takes a ton of, or that has like a high inertia to get. Um, mm -hmm. no, no high roller pun intended, but um, yeah, I, I can see the momentum of that being really good. But once it stops, I feel like you have just face planted, and all of your cards have turned off because either your resource engine is going to take time to get rolling again, mm -hmm. or you lost your opportunists, so you're not you don't have the free plus two to every test, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. I think running a plus, uh, like a succeed by two Safina would be pretty awesome. Uh, uh, because she can run time warp. So if you do tentacle, mm -hmm. you can you just run it over again. Yeah. And yeah. like once you got to that cruising altitude, I mean, mm -hmm. if you have a time warp or two in your hand, or heaven forbid, underneath her, so you can yeah. painted world it, like mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're passing a lot of tests. Yeah. Uh, and. I've always liked, um, you know, cloning your uh, your hot streaks uh, and uh, premonition, uh, yeah. all stuff that she could run. I don't know. It's a, yeah, it's a Safina card. It's an expensive build, uh, yeah. and it takes a while to get going, but it is very very flexible. Um, yeah, like four wild to any test, like that's it's yeah. wild. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then doubling that, you're pulling back twelve resources instead of just the six recoup. Um, yeah. yeah uh, the more you can know about the test in advance, the better this gets, mm -hmm. I think. But like for Finn, if he's got to deal with and you're spending three to get to even for this, yeah. uh, I, you know, hopefully you would have, you would not be stuck doing that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I... Hmm. Mm -hmm. I it's feel... not the worst talent, uh, definitely. I uh, I feel uh, quite nice. enraptured by this card after our discussion. I might go build a Safina deck. Okay. In the near future. But uh, if I do, <laughs> I may not put an enraptured. I'm not sure. It is a mystic skill. Uh, mm -hmm. One intellect icon. It is practiced. If this skill mm -hmm. test is successful during an investigation, place one charge or secret on an asset you control. Mm -hmm. uh, keeps right of seeking. Seeking, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, except you'd have to make a intellect investigation successful. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> I'm bad at this game. <laughs> um, so uh, Norman, if for whatever reason he was using this as one of his five uh, uh, level zero um, mystic cards, uh, would be well positioned to deal with this. Uh, what's her name? Uh, librarian Daisy. Yes, yep. uh, Daisy. Uh, who's got good investigation uh, could be recharging her glyphs. Um, yep. Or her shriveling if you're going to do spellcaster daisy. 
Yes, or or uh, Shervine. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think you take this if you're not doing the investigation yourself, because otherwise you're like just tagging along with the investigator yeah. and then recharging your own stuff. Uh, I think it's a I think it's a good card, but mm -hmm. it is it is niche, and you have to have a specific yes. build you're putting it in. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you you want charged or secret using uh items yeah. or assets rather um and if you're not playing with those then there's no reason to take this <laughs> yeah. i think in maybe like a safina who's running lock picks uh because uh, oh yeah no she could still do it yeah you know and and you have another spell out like a shriveling or yeah right to seek or if something you're going lock picks for investigation and shriveling for combat yeah I you know see that um it's very good at what it does but what it does mm -hmm. is very yeah. narrow so. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, and it's especially narrow because of the investigation. Not any skill test or any intellect test. Yeah. Um, I think it's an interesting counterpart to the uh, uh, true understanding, um, where it's also dependent on a test, you know, a, a, a type of test that you don't choose. Mm -hmm. um, but it is also, you know, other than recharge and... Uh, Spirit Speaker. Uh, I don't think there's really any way to get charges on stuff. Uh, so yeah. Well, there's the what's the the book from the core set that everyone hates. Oh, Book of Shadows. Book of, of Shadows. Yes. Everyone's favorite card. Yes. Um, I have, I use it in one deck and one deck only. <laughs> Castration. Yeah, I mean, I, uh Oh, Daisy could also do it too, but she's refilling the glyphs. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and Raptured compares favorably to Book Shadow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, okay. that's. Uh... I'm, I'm surprised that we were able to recall that this far into the future from Corsa. Um, I yeah. I think it's looking uh, into the read. future, really. Uh, yeah, um, recall the future level two Mystic Asset to cost augury and ritual traded, uh, intellect and agility icons. Uh, Reaction or response, rather. Uh, when you, a skill test you are performing begins, if Recall the Future is ready, name a Chaos token. If the named Chaos token is revealed during this skill test, exhaust your future. Then you get plus two skill value for this test. Amazing. Yes. Um, the fact that you don't have to narrows, exhaust it unless you use it? Oh, yeah. You just call it out whatever over and over. Like, if you're, you know, if you know that you're in... Uh, negative three and yeah, minus three and minus four territory for failure, and yeah. you, you're two up on the test. You call that out, and it's like it doesn't do anything until you get those cards, in which case, or those icons, in which case you pass it. So it's great. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can't you can't search for it because as of right now, there's no augury ritual um, interactions for the mm -hmm. traits, so you can't like use your acolyte or not acolyte. Um, you know your pet spell finder person, yeah. <laughs> the, the the lady who's cowering in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So you can't you can't tutor for this, uh, but it also doesn't take an arcane slot, so uh, <sighs> it's outstanding. This this card, every time I've played with it, mm -hmm. I feel like this, and I'm not I'm not saying it did, but it feels mm -hmm. like it snuck through playtesting, being <laughs> too good. Like just the way how you don't have to exhaust it until you actually use it, but every single test, if you're taking a test in the mythos phase plus three mm -hmm. during your turn, you could mm -hmm. use it on all four of those tests until it gets used up. Yeah. Which, yeah. And like you said, once you get into certain territories where you're like, okay, I know like these mm -hmm. two tokens are going to screw me over, then you have two recall the futures out. Like it, it's, it makes mm -hmm. your, your spread on the bag way better. Um, yeah, and I, if you've got Counterspell or um, uh, Defiance, you know, yeah. Defiance 2, uh, then you know exactly what you're and you just, yeah. boot, you know, it's like, it's almost a premonition level of, of uh, you know, uh, test control. Yeah, except or it's you permanent. Narrow, <laughs> yeah, exe yeah, except it's out until, and then it just readies later anyways. Yeah. Uh, the icons are whatever, like... Poor. Yeah, yeah, you don't really care about them at all. Um, uh, and Diana is not going to like, I mean, she's probably not going to be like well prepared and then use them for this. I don't know. She's probably got better stuff to exhaust. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, if this doesn't really need anything to be as good as it is. The two decks that I... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, the two decks that I found I've found the most success with is mm-hmm. uh, Agnes with Lucky mm-hmm. Backup. Um, nice. And then also Jim, because he cuts yeah. out those skulls. And so now cuts you've got... The skulls. the skulls are zeros. You've got your mm-hmm. whatever numbers. You've got the couple tokens in there. You've maybe got a Defiance... Um, you got this you've sealed something, you know, yeah, outside like, the range of uh, the Recall the Futures uh, bonus. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Right? Like it, it's, it's an incredible control card. Just a, you know, it's not mm-hmm. even a control card. It's just a good everything card. Do you do you take tests when you when you play this game? Yes, Recall <laughs> the Future is good. There you go. Yeah, and, and it doesn't. Yeah, again, it doesn't need other stuff to get the most out of it. Unlike Quick Study, or you know. Uh, uh, well prepared needs another in, uh, installed card to begin with, but this mm-hmm. is like you drop the uh, recall the future, and it's like maybe that's your drop. Like maybe you just start going from there. Yeah. Uh, if if you've got the stats to accomplish whatever else you're trying to accomplish, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it it, it 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 rules. Yeah, and you know, like we said, you can you can try and try again on the test until it exhausts. Uh, <laughs> try and this try. One's yours. Yeah. So, uh, good handoff. Thanks. Try and try again is a survivor asset, uh, level one, two cost, and has a willpower icon, talent traded. It has uses, three tries. Uh, if try and try again has no tries, discard it. I'm kind of sad it's not try, try, try again, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, reaction after a skill test has failed. If a skill card you own is committed to that test, exhaust try and try again and spend a try. Return that skill card to your hand. Uh, I do not really like this card. I feel it's it's limiting to me. Mm. Is it is it worth the card slot and the cost to get three skill cards back? Is my only question. Um. Yeah. I mean, comparing this to um, True Survivor, I think is the one that gives you three innate skills yeah. back, back to hand. Um, it's lower level, so this is more readily available. I mean, can take this or something. Um, mm-hmm. It's got a usage, uh, you know, the tries. I do not think we will see a, a recharge or a, a true, uh, <laughs> truth from fiction tries. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I don't out. see that rec- becoming a, a recurring survivor uh, <laughs> uh, usage. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It gives everyone, you know, anyone that can get one survivor cards can become Silas for three tests, kind of. Yeah. Uh, but I I don't know. Like, I mean, this came from a higher level card as well. Yes, which, which is also regularly regarded, I believe, is pretty mediocre. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's the only difference is this one has one less willpower icon, uh, mm-hmm. and it's level one instead of level three. Same cost. And this one has the other one is unlimited. Yeah. Yeah. So this one has three tries and you exhaust it. The other one is just exhausted. Um, Yeah. It's just how much do you want to invest in saving your skill cards? uh, The the one thing I can think of is uh, with a card that we'll see in a future pack, um, Take Heart. Uh, Getting three additional uses of Take Heart, uh, that would be, you know, because when you when you take tests. I think almost inevitably you fail some of them. So being able to turn failed tests into uh, drawing two cards and take and getting two resources, uh, and you know that's like a a miniature stand together. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of how I, I've started thinking about it. Uh, as long as you're you're you know losing failing those tests, which you know happens. So getting you know you can. It, it, the, if the best thing I'm saying about this card is that it can turn other failed tests into stand togethers uh, for one person, I, I don't know. Yeah. Do you know, I, the, do you know the timing on try try again and take heart? Uh, because I'm actually not 100 percent on it. Well, this is after the test is failed, so I think this is after things would be discarded. Uh, because take or heart is it is... considered failed like in step five once 
success and or failure is determined. Uh, okay. When, if, after, and take heart is if this test fails, and then this yeah. is after the test is failed. I think you're right. I think it does work because it's when, if, after is mm -hmm. the order. Yeah. I think it does work. I'm not guaranteeing it, but um, yeah, maybe. If it, yeah. yeah I mean, it's a pretty edge case, I think. But yeah. it is nice low level, like most survivor cards. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I yeah. really. It, 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 like, how dependent are you skill cards to accomplish what your deck does, also? Yeah. Because if you really need those to go off consistently, like if Min is your your main investigator, uh, and she's got your, you know, her deduction twos, and she draws a tentacle and right. loses that, losing that deduction two sucks. Mm -hmm. So being able to pull that back for a, a you know a try later uh, could be good. Yeah. But of course, once you pass it, it's gone. Yeah. I mean, it, it's skill card protection, maybe rather than incursion. I don't know. Yeah. I. I think we're painting ourselves into a corner trying to justify it. Yeah, I, I think you've definitely painted yourself in the corner. Yep. Uh, cornered. Uh, <laughs> level 2 survivor asset. 2 cost, talent traded, uh, single willpower, single combat icon. Free action. Discard one card from your hand. You get plus 2 skill value for this test. Limit once per test. Uh, it doesn't exhaust itself, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it turns everything in your hand into an unexpected, which can, you know, be make or break. Um, I think it's, uh, one of the better talents from the pack, I would say. Yeah. I, I have like, I have played with cornered a lot. I really like mm -hmm. it. I think it's, it's great in every survivor, um, mm -hmm. cause they do a lot of discard stuff and, they have ways to get cards out of the, the discard pile. Mm -hmm. uh, they have this has good improvised uh, event synergy, yep. um, which uh, we can talk about. So if you don't have an innate way to get rid of cards out of your hand, like Wendy or uh, Ashcan slash Duke, um, yep. this I think becomes even more valuable. Yeah, this is really good in Yorick, like. Mm -hmm. chucking a weapon or something you discard want. piles your hand yeah, you, yeah you chuck it in there and then you kill something on that test and then you take that card and put it back into play paying its cost yeah. but you just got plus two out of it mm -hmm. it's uh yeah cornered is i think it's i think it's fantastic yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> good talk <laughs> yeah I, I mean you know as there's cards with like no icons like um, like the tarot cards and other yeah. stuff it's it it's only it, it makes those cards more valuable. Uh it smooths your uh your icon not curve, but like your icon distribution. Mm -hmm. Like just everything you know, you can think of everything in your deck other than weaknesses, uh, as having two willpower icons instead of whatever it's got. Yep. Or two not two, two wild, willpower, wild. two two wilds. Yeah. Which is um, insanely good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh so uh card of the pack for you oh man it is a close close race actually between cornered and recall the future to me uh -huh. high uh, high roller is i think the funnest card yes for the most I love high roller. when high roller works uh it feels you're yeah king of the world yeah and then you come crashing and down. when you spend three to fail that test and uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Lose your opportunists, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but uh, I gotta I gotta be honest, I changed my mind. Um uh yeah, I think I'm gonna go with recall the future as well. Um even if it's never going off, uh those times when it you know, when you know what you need uh and it saves you, you you feel like uh you know, uh what's his name? The the uh you know Professor X. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm a huge X Men fan here. You you feel like a Charles Xavier because you're yeah. a genius that can see the future. <laughs> yeah, I. Oh, what do I like better, cornered or recall the future? I think, I think it's recall the future, because mm -hmm. if you if you if you know enough about the game to like kind of math out the the bag and you know what will 
win you or yeah. lose you the, the test. Uh, recall mm-hmm. the future asks nothing of you but to say something, whereas cornered, you need to discard a card. There's a cost yep. to it. Um, yeah. And cornered, I think, is better in certain decks. I think, like, yeah. Yorick it is a bit better. But recall the future is just good in anyone that can take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to injure to an enemy's deck, uh, just as an example of someone that can take both cards. But yeah. I do not think I would take cornered with her, since I'm probably not counting on using non-willpower stuff if I can if I can help. Yeah. So the conversion does not strike me as immediately useful in that case. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for joining me, Casey. This has been great. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah. I love talking about these cards. I, I Especially also, second wind. Yeah, yeah, second wind. That was, uh, oh boy, <laughs> there was some wind there. Yeah, the breaking wind, more like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Miskatonic AV Club, Mythos Monster Production. We're out. <laughs>